Hello everyone and welcome to another lesson in Ang 10. For this module, we are going to talk about factoring polynomials. In the previous module, we talk about polynomials, how to get the degree, how to tell if a given expression is a polynomial or not. Uh, we also did learn how to add, subtract, multiply, or divide uh, polynomials. For this module, we are going to talk yet another very important concept in polynomials, and this is factoring. Factoring is basically uh, a reverse operation, I say of reverse operation of multiplication or multiplying polynomials. I say reverse because instead of getting the product of two or more polynomials, we are now getting the factors. It seems like we are uh, we are given the product, and now we are looking for the factors. What factors do we multiply to get to the polynomial? Okay, so there are several techniques that we are going to employ for this module. So here is our outline. For the first one, we are going to talk about factoring using the greatest common factor okay, of the polynomial. And then second, we will talk about difference of two squares. Third, we will talk about factoring trinomials. And we will talk about these three, factoring trinomials with leading coefficient of one, factoring trinomials with leading coefficient other than one, and then we will talk about factoring a perfect square trinomial. Then after that, we are going to talk about factoring the sum and difference of two cubes. And then finally, we will talk about factoring by grouping. So let us begin our discussion on factoring by taking into this topic first. Factoring the greatest common factor of a polynomial. When we say greatest common factor, this is no different from the greatest common factor that you have known from your high school. Okay, the greatest common factor is the common of all the terms that can divide them evenly. Okay, since this is a polynomial, the greatest common factor is also a polynomial that uh, basically it's a monomial that can divide each of the terms evenly. Okay, so to factor using the greatest common factor, we can we first we need to identify the greatest common factor of the coefficients, the constants. Okay, and then next we need to identify the greatest common factor of the variables, and then we combine these greatest common factors to form an expression. The whole expression is now the greatest common factor of the polynomial. Then after determining the greatest common factor of the polynomial, we determine what the greatest common factor needs to be multiplied by to obtain each term in the expression. And then we write the factored expression as the product of the GCF and the sum of the terms we need to multiply by. Okay, to understand this better, let us look at the following examples. Okay, so for our first example, let us factor 6x cubed y cubed plus 45x squared y squared plus 21xy. First, let us take a look at the constants, the coefficients. Okay, so we have 6, 45, and 21. So what is the greatest common factor of these three coefficients? Okay, you can apply your knowledge in getting the greatest common factor uh, of these three numbers. Okay, so we shall use the listing, okay, the listing methods, right? So we have three numbers, 6, 45, and 21. What are the factors of 6? So what are the numbers that can divide 6 evenly? So we have 1, 
two, three, and six. Okay, these are the numbers that when uh, when six is divided by uh, these numbers, the answer is uh, an integer. Okay. How about 45? What are the factors of 45? First, we have 1, 3, what else? 5, uh, 9, right? Uh, 15, and 45. And then 21. What are the factors of 21? We have 1, 3, 7, and 21. If you take a look at the factors listed, what is common to them? What is common to them is 3, right? And 1. Okay, but the greatest, the greatest common factor therefore is 3. That means uh, we can factor out 3. Okay, but that's only for the constant, for the coefficient. We also need to know the greatest common factor of the variables. Okay, so we have x cubed, x squared, and x. Okay, so we need to list down the, the greatest common factor of the variables is uh, basically the 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 one with the lowest exponent okay so since we have x cubed x squared and x the greatest common factor is x and then for y we have y cubed y squared and y the greatest common factor is y okay and then we combine all these factors together therefore the greatest common factor okay so the greatest common factor is equal to 3xy okay so this greatest common factor will be factored out okay will be factored out therefore this now becomes 3xy and then let us determine what is left in the first term if we factor out 3xy Anya itinabati dito yung first term. Okay? What is left in the first term if we take out 3xy? Seems like we are dividing 6x cubed y cubed by 3xy. So that's 2. Because when we multiply 3 times 2, it will result to 6. Okay? And then we have x squared. It's so like x times x squared is equal to x cubed and then y squared for the second term we have 45 divided by 3 is 15 and then x and then y and for the last term we have 21 divided by 3 is 7 and then x and y is already factored out so this is a constant 7 so this is the answer for our factoring problem. Okay, so the greatest common factor is 3xy. Inilabas natin yung 3xy. And we determine what polynomial is left when 3xy is factored out. So that's how we do it when we factor by greatest common factor. Let us solve this one. Let us factor the polynomial by the greatest common factor. Okay. So first, we need to take a look at the coefficients. 6, 4, 2, 8. Okay. Remember, the first rule for the greatest common factor is the greatest common factor cannot be greater than the least of the coefficients okay the least of the coefficients is 2 all right so the greatest common factor cannot be greater than 2 okay but can be equal to 2 okay so in this case we know that 2 divides 
all of the other x uh, coefficients therefore the greatest common factor is 2 okay and then let us take a look at the variable we have y raised to 6 y raised to 5 y raised to 4 and y raised to 2 the the one with the lowest exponent is the greatest common factor so in this case the greatest common factor is equal to 2y squared okay now we factor out the greatest common factor we factor out 2y squared and let us determine what is left in the polynomial to determine the other factor so 6y raised to 6 divided by 2y squared is 3y raised to 4 right and then minus 4y raised to 5 divided by 2y squared is 2y cubed and then plus 2y raised to 4 divided by y squared is y squared and then finally minus 8 divided by 2 is 4 y squared divided by y squared is 1 therefore this is a constant okay so this is the factored form of the given polynomial let us take a look at this another example so we have a polynomial with three terms and each term consists of a constant and three variables first let us take a look at the constants so we have negative 10 negative 20 and positive 5 it's obvious the greatest common factor of the coefficients is equal to 5 right okay for r we have r cube r cube r square therefore the gcf is r square for s we have s squared s squared s raised to 4 so the gcf is s squared and then for t we have t raised to 4 t cube t raised to 4 so therefore t cube is the gcf now if we factor out the gcf the gcf is 5 r squared s squared t cubed we factor out this one negative 10 divided by 5 is negative 2 uh, r uh, r cubed r squared so we have r s squared and s squared t raised to 4 and t cubed so that's t okay, and then minus 20 divided by 5 is 4 r cubed r squared so there's r raised to 1 or simply r s squared s squared the same t cubed t cubed the same and then for the last term we have 5 divided by 5 is 1 r squared r squared s raised to 4 s squared so that's s squared and then t raised to 4 t cubed that's t okay so that is now the factored form of the polynomial sometimes in the case like this we do not want the first term in this polynomial to be negative okay, that is why in other uh, if you look at your module uh, the negative is also factored out okay but nonetheless this is correct okay both are correct okay they are both correct uh, it, it, it's, it's just ano, pa, the, the instruction na kung ano yung ang gagawin natin dito. Okay, but what I'm saying is uh, this one is correct. The other one in the module is also correct. The only difference between them is the negative sign. The negative sign is also factored out in the module. In our example here, the negative sign is not factored out. And finally, this is our last example for factoring using the greatest common factor. Okay, so let us take a look at the given problem x raised to 2n plus x raised to n plus 2. Okay, we can actually rewrite this expression into something more useful. Okay, so at, a at, a, at a, our first glance, seem like there is no common, di ba? Parang wala namang pagkaparehas yung dalawang terms natin. But we can actually rewrite these terms 
so that we can see what is common to them by applying the rules in integer exponent. This one, x raised to 2n, can be written as x raised to n and then raised to 2, right? Because this can be simplified as x raised to 2n. Okay, so this x raised to 2n and x raised to n raised to 2, they are the same, okay? And for the second term, x raised to n plus 2, okay, the, the exponent, you see the exponent, they are added together. So we can apply the integer exponent rule, the theorem 1, that's x raised to n times x squared, right? So they have the same base, we need to add the exponent, this means we can simplify this one into this one, okay? They are the same. Like if you take a look at these two terms, we have x raised to n and x raised to n in here. That is why the common, the common expression from both of these terms is x raised to n. So we factor out x raised to n. This is our greatest common factor. And then we determine what is left when x raised to n is factored out from x raised to n squared. So x raised to n squared means there are two x raised to n's here. So if we take out x raised to n, one x raised to n, there is another x raised to n left. And then plus we factor out x raised to n, what is left is x squared. Okay? So x raised, this is now the factored form right, of the given expression.